Buyers are offering ten, thirty, fifty thousand dollars over asking and still losing. How could you not think something was whacked in the housing market? How could you not think there's a bubble getting ready to burst? just like it did in the crash of the late 2000s. If you're worried about a crash or maybe hoping for one, this video will offer some answers. We have to look at what it was like then and what it's like now to understand what's happening in the market. For future reference, here's where we are. Staggering home prices, intense buyer competition, inventory at historic lows, mortgage rates at their highest in a decade, and affordability for first time home buyers just about non existent. Here's how it was during the crash. Let me tell you a story. From 2003 to 2007, you could get a loan just by saying you'd repay it. I'll pay it back, I promise. That was called a no-doc loan. You could get a ninja loan, no job, no income, no assets, low credit scores, no credit score, none of that mattered. There was a lender joke back then, if you could fog a mirror, you could get a loan. $350 billion per year were handed out to buy millions of homes secured by not much more than a pinky swear. With millions of homes sold to people who barely qualified and many who didn't at all, a tragic outcome was almost inevitable. By 2007, 1.2 million foreclosures were being processed. By 2009, it was 2.1 million foreclosures being processed, and the crash was well on its way. This may seem like a boring history lesson, but the reason I'm telling you this story is because what happened then is not happening now, yet the comparisons rage with today's market and the crash of the 2000s. Back to the story. The current number of foreclosures is 38,000, not 2.1 million. And homeowner equity is up 29%. Any homeowner in trouble today can easily sell and make a nice profit instead of getting foreclosed on or needing a short sale, which is where the wheels came off last time. The biggest change is that lenders have really tightened up. Anyone who's applied for a loan knows firsthand that lenders are much more strict now in giving loans only to the most qualified buyers. That's been going on since well before the Dodd-Frank Act of 2010. Dodd-Frank changed the rules for lenders, vastly improving the odds of loans getting repaid. Housing inventory, or lack of it, affects prices big time. Inventory is measured by absorption rate. Simply put, it's how many houses sell in a month and how many are available for sale. If 10 homes a month sell and there's 60 available, that's a six month supply, easy math. That's called a balanced market. If there's too many homes listed, like during the crash, sellers will then have to compete with one another for the buyer's attention, prices drop, that's a buyer's market. If there's too few homes, like in the market today, buyers have to compete with each other to get the seller's attention, prices rise, that's a seller's market. Back then, eight to 10 months supply was normal. These days, 1.8, in my area, it's two weeks, and prices are literally off the charts. So why does the bubble bursting idea keep coming up time and time again? Fear mongering mostly, I think, the topic gets attention and clicks. But at its core, I believe it's the extremes we're seeing. It comes from the idea our current growth rate is not sustainable, something that has to give or break or burst, or not. An important piece of the puzzle is the household's balance sheet. As hard as it is for new buyers to afford a home, homeowners in general are doing well. Fortune Magazine states that over 40% of homes have 50% equity. What that means is, like I said a minute ago, if a storm does come, homeowners are much better positioned to ride things out instead of flooding the market with foreclosures and trash and home values. And finally, as painful as it is, with interest rates rising, fewer buyers will cool the market. More homes will become available, prices will moderate, and we can begin to back away from the abyss instead of falling into it. So are we in a real estate bubble or not? The answer is not like the one in 2008, but we are not out of the woods yet. Stay tuned. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. We'd love to have you join us. Talk to you soon.